is it just an evolutionary accident that we're here? And I, my gut sense is that that is that notion that a lot of biologists will put forward is a fundamental reason why a lot of people with a religious bent simply don't accept evolution. I mean, we tend to hear that, oh, it's, you know, the, the story of uh, Genesis in the Bible doesn't add up. But I think at a more fundamental level, there's this sense of, if we're just an accident, mm -hmm. what, you know, I, where, where does that leave my sense of religion? And I guess my question is, is there something important at stake here in our deeper values? Or is this just a science question? Well, I think, I think it's a question of, is there an intentionality out there? And that's something that really science can't address. I mean, science does have to deal with the material. And um, uh, when you come to questions that lie beyond the material, science isn't going to help you a lot. And uh, I don't think scientists should, uh, should be, be taking positions one way or another on uh, the kind of thing that, that, that science really cannot address. I think we, 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 we open ourselves up to a lot of criticism by trying to push it uh, too far. Um, I, would not be, I would not want to, uh, uh, to deny that there might be some larger intentionality um, out there, or that uh, even that evolution or that the mechanisms that we see at work in the world, not just evolution, but all the laws of physics and everything else, were part of some, some, some in, in, intentional process. But we can't touch that with uh, scientific methods. And, um, uh, and so it's, this is, this is a, a decision that the individual has to make that lies at a much, uh, a level beyond science. So it's beyond my pay grade, basically, <laughs> to, uh, to, to answer that kind of question. Melanie, what's your take on this? Well, this is a this is a question that I personally I don't I will I will just tell you flat out I don't struggle with this question personally. I um, when people when people ask me about you know the meaning of life and doesn't this sort of um, this idea that there is a random aspect to evolution and that I, I think that calling us an accident is is misstating the position in a way. I mean there is. I think anyone who studies evolution, including Simon, would agree that no, there yeah. are random aspects yes. of evolution, right? Yes, yes, yes. Mutation is a random yes, process. Yes, yes. It's well, where variation comes from. Okay. <laughs> On the way. Well, I can talk about that later. But, um, <clears throat> but the idea that we are an accident suggests that nothing that came before us was important in any way or that it was completely a matter of happenstance, which is not true at all. It is the product of evolutionary forces. Um, but <clears throat> struggling with this question of intentionality, like I said, like I don't personally struggle with it. I don't think that there is any intentionality behind it. Um, I, I was never socialized into thinking that there would have to be intentionality behind it. So it's not something that informed my worldview. And I'm an anthropologist, so I have to understand that you know we all come from our own cultural, intellectual, religious traditions, and they shape the way that we think. And, that's the way that I think. The reason that I'm interested in this question and that I'm interested in this topic is because my primary job is teaching undergraduate students. That's what I do pretty much every day. And so for me, it is important to be able to address these questions because they're questions that they have and that the public has in general. And that the less that we talk about them, the more there is a wall. So, so how, do you, how do you deal with the students who might be religious and who say, you know, I just I don't know what to make of the story because it doesn't fit with my sense that I, I there's a there's a reason why I'm here there you know it was uh, sort of, it's I'm not an accident uh, there was I was meant to be here how do you if if I don't know if you if your students ever say that to you it it actually doesn't happen that often <laughs> which is interesting <laughs> but it, it happens more in casual conversations mm -hmm. um, with with people I know who I'm not I'm not teaching but I it informs the way that I teach. Um, um, part of it is is kind of the answer that Ian gave, basically that um, there are the whole concept of faith is that it's unquestioned, right? You don't question it, you don't test it. It doesn't involve hypothesis testing. I don't know how to formulate a hypothesis to test that in a scientific sense. I mean, if we're staying complete with it, completely within the realm of science here, it is a different discussion, right? But I, I tell them that you know, I. I'm a reflexive anthropologist, you know, in, in some ways I'm almost a postmodernist at heart, that what we understand is that, you know, science is a way of learning about what we understand to be reality, and it seems to work for us, 
you know, we, we do this iterative process and we learn more and then we take the insights that we make and they make our lives better because we can then operationalize them to like, you know, the medical field or, you know, and <laughs> psychological research or sociological research, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that, um, that the question of, of what that means for religion, I, I am not sure. Um, I, that is something that's evolved. It's one of the reasons why I'm here is that I wanted to talk to you guys about this, that that's a, an answer that's evolving for me personally yeah. as well. So, so Simon, uh, are, are, is this scientific <clears throat> question we've been talking about, is that entirely separate from how a religious person would uh, approach some of these questions, or is there some connection there? Um, oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> we're human, thank goodness. Uh, <laughs> thereby, there must be a connection because uh, humans are universally religious. Uh, 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 one of the most pious people I know in my country is Richard Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> a man of deep conviction, <laughs> which is w always what we seek in the church, uh, I believe. Um, and I have no quarrel with either of the comments received from Ellie or Ian at all. Uh, I agree entirely. Uh, uh, though I would put a gloss on it, I think. Uh, one would be that, um, as I think Melanie said, uh, science gives us a view of reality. Of course it does. Uh, well, in fact, it's even better than that because, as I again remind people I, I teach in Cambridge, um, I, I feel very envious of the physicists, unlike the biologists. Biology, I have to say, it's not, you know, it doesn't really sort of have a powering sense that there are fundamental new questions to answer. Look at the physicists. In the last 20 years, they've lost something like 80% of the visible universe. Now, that is really impressive, <laughs> yeah, that is I have to say. That's, that, that suggests a subject with a future. Keep at it. Go on. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wonder, you know, what, through, admittedly, what Ian was saying about our particular intelligence, our view of what reality is. Um, and I think the point about science, in addition, which is sometimes forgotten when we're in a more triumphalist mode, is it is deeply provisional. Uh, yes, there's the periodic table, and yes, phosphorus and oxygen will do this. These are facts, as is evolution, no dispute about that. But on, on the other hand, um, it may yet be that, uh, not as a theological escape clause, I don't think it's going to be like that at all, but it may turn out again that the reason why we think the universe is so extraordinarily interesting is not in its own way accidental. If you're again invited to look at this, then you feel you're onto something. So that would be a religious perspective, right? It, it is of a sort, but again, emphatically, I would not, I'm sure my colleagues here would not say, this is an argument for it. Because if you start doing that, you've had it. You, you know, you cannot import these arguments. It, it, they're category mistakes. But you are suggesting <coughs> that if you totally accept the, the story of evolution, there's, there's nothing that stands in the way of being a person of faith. I hope not. Mm -hmm. I'd be most disappointed. No, I don't think, I don't think it would. Uh, but uh, on, on the other hand, you know, I, if there's one thing that the, 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 the convergence could tell us about a creator, is that the creator is pretty unimaginable. Oh. I mean, the, uh, the, the universe would be, uh, would be a more interesting place if everybody had a different solution. And yet very everything. illogical yeah, as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, exactly. oh, you well. painted me into a corner. Uh, <laughs> it's very, 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 most embarrassing. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs>